Sorry about those technical difficulties, guys. But um, I'm here to talk about Cuba. And my main topic is the Cuban embargo and whether or not it should be kept in place. But I feel like to introduce that topic, um, you know, like most of my presentation is a real economic analysis. Um, but to introduce that topic, I wanted to um, kind of talk about what led up to the embargo and the uh, political events and nuances that surrounded the Cuban Revolution um, and the decline of an island nation that's only 90 miles from the U.S. coastline and that used to be um, one of the most developed nations in the Caribbean, if not the Western Hemisphere. Okay, so um, just a little quick introduction here. This Cuba before the revolution, just talking about a little bit of its history. It was liberated from Spain in 1898 uh, when it was a colony of, of Spain. Um, that was during the Spanish-American War. Um, and it had formal independence from the U.S. in 1902. After the war, the U.S. kind of occupied Cuba in order to, uh, in their words, provide a peaceful transition of government. Um, and the, for that reason, there's, there was a lot of U.S. influence in Cuba, um, which you will later see as there's a lot of American corporations and um, American military presence. You can even still see that in the sense that we still have Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. <coughs> and basically, after gaining independence from, from the U.S., it was plagued by a number of revolts, uh, coups, and, uh, and interventions by the part of the U.S. Cuba was kind of like the U.S.'s little brother that it kept having to send troops down to quell rebellions. Uh, and that was about until uh, Batista took power in 1940. Batista was the leader before Castro. <coughs> and uh, as you can see by this little political cartoon here, it kind of just shows how the, how the U.S. is always going back and forth between its coastline and Cuba, which, as you'll see as uh, time progresses here, there's a lot more, um, there's kind of some animosity built up with the Cuban people on the fact that they feel like America is kind of always intervening in their, in their business, whether doing so rightfully or not. So the Cuban economy before the revolution was pretty stable and honestly shows a lot of indicators um, of growth. I'm gonna talk about it more when I read some examples from my paper. But um, agriculture was their primary source of, I guess you could say, income, um, especially sugarcane. It was a big product produced on large plantations. Uh, my family, before they left Cuba, my dad's side of the family actually owned one of the bigger sugar canes in Cuba, uh, uh, sugar plantations in Cuba. Uh, and imports focused on manufacturing type materials, primarily from the U.S. So as they continued to build capital from their agriculture, they also looked towards industrializing, and all the materials to industrialize largely came from the United States. Um, and U.S. influence, so like I said, U.S. influence along with the money provided by agriculture had Cuba prime for a big economic takeoff. Its population largely had professional jobs uh, that were then fueled by these new emerging technologies that, um, that were brought over by these US companies, which largely had a big influence and reign in the, in the Cuban economy because Batista was able to cut deals and such with these American companies, um, and he didn't really control their influence. And so that was a big factor in tensions leading up to the revolution. Um, so some political factors that led up to the revolution. Uh, there was a big dislike of Batista because while he ran on a platform of progressivism, he wasn't really very progressive and he kind of ruled with an iron fist. Um, nobody liked the reliance and lack of control over American companies, which they felt pushed uh, Cubans out of well-paying jobs. And there were numerous human, human rights abuses by Batista's regime. Um, you know, people would disappear, people would be kind of beaten for their beliefs, not as severe as under Castro, but it was still something that 